Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today my friends at Sideshow have asked me to take a look at the Hot Toys First Order Snow Trooper 6 scale figure set. Let's see how it turned out. Alright, first up as always is the packaging. And it's exactly what we've come to expect from all things 6 scale and Star Wars from Sideshow and Hot Toys. Solid photography on the front. Nice chromated Star Wars logo right there, as you can see when I tilt it back. Uh, the label on the side of the uh, for Star Wars, as well as the branding up front for Disney that we've come to expect now. On the back, we have some small credits, a warning or two, and a few little knickknacks there. You can see, once again, the Disney logo, and that's just about everything on the outer surface. But this time, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper, because with all of these figures, there is included with it some more photography on the inside in that little insert that you see there. Uh, typically I don't showcase this, but I think that it's about time that I started giving it its due. Fold this thing down and you're treated to your first glimpse of your new figure or figures in this case. But I think we can do better than that, so let's dig into the guts of it. Okay everyone, here they are, the Hot Toys First Order Snow Trooper set. Still in its box, exactly the way that it's going to come to you, except for the fact that I have taken the liberty of removing the protective plastic bits for the purpose of this video. Now, love the design of these things. Each set comes complete with one commander. You can spot him by his red pauldron and one regular trooper. Each trooper also comes complete with his own personal environmental unit. You might call it a backpack. And all of these accessories. Each trooper has two variants of the Sonblast F-11, which is the standard line blaster for the First Order Troopers, and a variety of hands. These five, these five, all identical. These are the ones that are meant to hold these snazzy macro binoculars. Pull out the tray. You can reveal the rest of the figure that way, and you can also see that below the each figure comes a really snazzy stand with the First Order logo. That's not the first time that you've seen those. I think that that comes with all of the uh, First Order Troopers from the Force Awakens movies. Um, on the front of each stand is emblazoned the Star, the uh, First Order Snow Trooper moniker so that you can tell which stand goes to which figure. And that's everything that it comes with. Let's get these things onto the table and see what I can do with them in a posing session. Okay, everyone, you can see here that I have both of the First Order Snow Troopers out of their box just the way that they're gonna come to you in the package except for the fact that I have actually added the pack onto the back of the, the line trooper, the regular trooper, not the commander. And I have out here a, a Sonblast F11D blaster just for comparison. Now, I wanted to first note a lot of the similarities that exist, that do exist between the First Order Snow Troopers and the classic Snow Troopers from the Empire days. So, a lot of people out there seem to think that there's just no evolution here. I contradict that entirely in every possible way. Um, think of the differences between World War II uniforms and the modern equivalents that uh, the modern combat soldiers use. They're almost, they only bear like the most basic similarities. So much has changed in those over the years. We can't expect anything less to happen in the Star Wars galaxy. If that's not a good enough analogy for you, just think of um, the 67 Mustang Fastback and how little it, uh, it, how little resemblance it bears to the modern equivalent, the 2020 Mustangs. Um, they're similar in style. You can see, um, you can see that they belong to the same family, but a lot of it, there's just a gross departure in a lot of areas, and that just comes with evolution. You have to expect that. Uh, some of the differences that do exist, though, obviously, first and foremost for me, is the E11 versus the F11D. Um, you can tell, again, that they're from the same family, but there's a clear evolution between the two. Uh, the facial skirt on the Classic is replaced by a, uh, an enclosed helmet, obviously with environmental connections here. That brings me to my next point that I wanted to make, and that's the similarity between the TIE Fighter Pilot helmet, also the Flame Trooper helmet, and the Snow Trooper helmet. They all share a common jaw, um, lower jaw mandible sort of, sort of a bit. That's an interesting uh, design choice, kind of harkens to something that maybe a military would do. They would look for something that would just be more common that you could actually build upon for specialization, in this case, snow, flight, what have you. Um, finally, the, um, the biggest, most egregious difference that I think people called out would have been this slit visor here, as opposed to the two-eyed visor that uh, we see in the classic storm tro stormtroopers, snow troopers, TIE fighter pilots, what have you. This is pretty cool because it reminds me of one of those narrow visors that like the Inuit um, 
natives would use on their masks to reduce ice glare. So that actually has a practical purpose for a snow trooper like this. Anyway, that's a nice little quick rundown of some of the differences and similarities between the classic and the original. Anyway, let's get on to the posing and see what we can make these guys do. Okay, everyone, here we go. The First Order Snow Trooper 2-pack out of the box, ready to pose. Um, I'm going to start with the commander because, quite simply, because it's a little bit simpler to do the pose for the commander that I have in mind than it is for the mainline trooper, at least in some regards. Uh, just uh, taking a look at him here, the, I've got all the accessories arranged the way that I need them to be. Um, these backpacks, um, they have a nice system for uh, application. You just uh, have to match the geometrical shape on the back with the geometrical shape on the backpack and then slide them in. Now what that means is that they just kind of rest there and gravity does its work. You can see that they're very, very loose. So the very last step in the posing process will be to put that backpack on. Um, it's not actually a backpack, it's actually a personal environmental unit. Um, that's per the, uh, the books. <laughs> they indicate that that is a um, personal environmental suit. Uh, I think scuba for space. At any rate, um, yeah, this strap is kind of sticking out there, so I'm going to tuck that into the armor. Just, yeah, just to get it a little bit out of the way. And what I want to do is I want to utilize this. What I have in mind for this um, first pose, this inaugural pose, if you will, is I want him to be doing something a little bit more static museum-like and him to be doing something a little bit more action-oriented. I think combining the two is a nice effective way to get them to complement each other. Uh, you don't have to um, have them telling a story exactly. I mean, you don't have to have them doing the same thing. Um, in order to display them in a way that conveys character. Um, it's kind of a defining thing to have a commander doing something commanderly and uh, the soldier himself to be doing something uh, action-oriented, something a little bit more violent, if you will. Uh, so let's just pop this guy in and follow it up with this guy. These are the hands that are specifically designed. You can see the, how, the way that they're kind of cut away at an angle there. They're specifically designed to give you a little bit more of a bend. So they're a little more challenging than the average hands to put on in that regard, but it can be done and very easily too. Okay, so that's done. Next step is to get this into one of the hands. I'm gonna start with his right hand and be very gentle. I think there is paint on these hands, so we don't wanna mess that all up. Now, the trick to hitting a pose with uh, the snow troopers, or any trooper in such a way where you're doing, uh, where you're wielding an accessory that's, it's by its definition, um, symmetrical, is to find a way to break that symmetry and make it look more attractive as a result. So I'm going to just bring this guy up here and get this other hand going. Just kind of trying to manipulate multiple joints at once here. And let's grab this. These uh, hands are nice and pliable. Finding that. Now this, uh, this flexible, these flexible parts of these binoculars that enable it to be folded down into a more easily packable state, one assumes, uh, can work in your benefit if you aren't too terribly keen on having them all the way open. Now in my case, I don't want to bring these all the way up to his eyes as if he's peering through them. It will do it. I experimented a little bit before this and, and found that I could do it, but what I also found was that it's not that terribly attractive. So I'm just going to bring these arms up. Now you'd notice also that these are double jointed, so you, can, you have to work both joints in order to get them to look normal. See how right here I've just got this joint bent? This joint isn't fully, um, fully flexed, so I'm going to manipulate that one a little bit more just to make his forearms look a little bit less lengthy. lengthy. I don't know what lanky is, I think I just created a new word. So my goal here is to have this at a bit like a 45 degree angle. The implication is that he's just lowered them from his sight, but at the same time I want him to be not necessarily distracted, but his eyes to be drawn a little bit to one side. And for his torso to be doing so as well, as if he's just stopped looking at something over here and he's turning to 
potentially scan the horizon and see if there's anything he needs to be looking at over here. So that's the story that I'm gearing up to tell with this one. Now, we don't need quite such a wide stance. I think just in moving the figure, I've just kind of adjusted the stance a little bit to make it a little bit more wide. I want him to be just relaxed, feet shoulder width apart, but at the same time, I just want him to be kind of cocking his hips just a little bit to one side and adjust that torso to compensate. That also has the added benefit of just kind of leaning him into the direction that he's eventually going to go with those binoculars. So, let me just rotate this around, pivot it. Now, see he's leaning a little bit farther forward there than you would want because he's kind of trying to topple forward. That is my intent. We want to take the backpack on now and drop it on. And that will help to maintain that balance. But balance isn't going to be important to me right now because I'm so drawn to these bases that I'm just going to go ahead and use them right now. So a lot of people might try to flame me or just say, meh, that's dull. I disagree. You're going to want poses like this on your shelf. You're going to want a variety. And for an officer, such as this First Order Snow Trooper Commander, to be doing something like this, this is right out of a Battlefield playbook. I would just arch, I'm just kind of fine tuning it. I want to arch his back a little bit here. Just give him a little bit more presence. And I think I'm just going to drop these, just, these binoculars just a touch to compensate because yeah. And make sure you have those armor bits pushed all the way up to the wrist to hide those ball joints. And there you've got it. Okay, so that's one. Part two is to get something a little bit more action oriented for the snowtrooper soldier here. Look at this. This is just such a cool design. I know I talked about it earlier, but I just can't shut up about it. It's no wonder that they found excuses to use this design throughout the course of the films. All right, so let's get rid of these hands. We don't need those anymore. Wipe away some of this dust. And this hand we're gonna keep. This is the hand that came with, with the uh, figure in the box, but I'm gonna swap out obviously for a gun hand. Now, for the particular, most times when you see these snow troopers, they are using the version of the um, F-11 uh, blaster that includes a um, stock. Let's see, get that hand onto that blaster. He's not practicing safe trigger finger all, all the way there. Let's go ahead and pop that in. Now these wrist pegs are very tight in these hands, so use caution. Don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> as my dad always used to say. Thanks, dad. Miss you, dude. Um, all right, let's draw this up because this pose that I kind of have in mind here is a bit inspired by Han and Luke. Han from the, uh, well, not necessarily Han, actually just Luke from the scene in the Death Star right before he's uh, going to swing across the trench with Princess Leia. The trench being a, like a cad, that chasm, that, uh, that vent, that shaft they were trapped in by the stormtroopers. So I just want him to be doing a single grip, supporting it like a pistol grip, kind of like Luke did. And so that's kind of got that established. That's just a rough, I'm gonna fix that, adjust it ever so slightly later on down the line. All right, let's move this out of the way. Because at this point, I think I wanna bring this leg out almost as if he's stepping from cover. Notice how I also rotated the leg so that the foot is fa facing this way. I kind of did that in one fell motion. It's kind of how easy these things are to pose. So he's, look at how easily that just falls into place. That has a lot to do with these, uh, these boots here. They're double ball jointed in there and they're very flexible. They have a lot of play with that soft plastic. So I'm just going to kind of get his head where I want it to be here. Just kind of looking down the barrel of the gun. All right, cool. Now I'm just gonna futz with this because I kind of want to get a little bit of action going on. Look at how nicely that fabric downscales, that's sweet. Don't neglect the pouches and the belt. Now for me, I, without looking at any reference, I'm just gonna assume that you're gonna want equidistance between the gap, an equidistant gap between the, the uh, breastplate and the belt. 
and between the cod piece and the belt. So just keep that symmetrical. This is one of those times where symmetry works because it's uniform symmetry as opposed to posture, the symmetry of posture. All right, I'm gonna drop this backpack onto him. And as they say, Bob's your uncle. And that's it, photo gallery coming up. My first instinct is to say that appearances by the First Order Snowtroopers are woefully lacking in the sequel trilogy. But when I think about it, uh, you didn't see the Imperial Snowtroopers a whole lot in the original trilogy either. So that's, that really comes as no surprise. Um, in order to see them a lot, we'd have to spend a whole lot more time on more ice planets. And we need some variety in our Star Wars worlds, I think. In case you're not aware, I think the coolest appearance by the Snowtroopers is in a deleted scene from The Force Awakens in which Kylo takes a platoon of them on a search for the Millennium Falcon. It's pretty cool. It only lasts about three minutes, maybe. I don't even think that it's that long, but it's, uh, it's pretty stellar and they're utilized most effectively in that deleted scene. The longer I have my hands on these figures, the more that I like them and the more I've come to appreciate their design. And, as is frequently the case, a good design has yielded a pretty solid figure. It's very poseable, it looks really great on a shelf, and it really mixes well with other figures of its kind. That's about it. Let me know what you think of these figures in the comment below. If you have a different favorite First Order Trooper, let me know that as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, be good to your plastic.